Well, I'm George Abraham, and I am an erstwhile collector of art, and James Rosenquist happens to be one of my very favorite artists for many, many reasons. I purchased this, this piece, uh, as re in fact, a couple of pieces from this series, the Speed of Light series, because of what it says to me. You'll notice I'm looking at it from a distance, but one of the incredible things about Rosenquist's art is that it has detail from distance, and as you get closer, the detail even becomes more pronounced and becomes more interesting. The other thing I like about Rosenquist's work is I like the evolution of his style from his earlier paintings, which were very large, almost billboard type, and initially he was called a pop artist, and has evolved into something which is a very kinetic and colorful type of art that is very meaningful to me. The Speed of Light series happens to be the series that he did here, as you see on these lithographs, around 1999, but this one, but I think he started on it earlier. And what he does is there are different, different uh, parts of the Speed of Light series, and what he's trying to do is to give an impression of what you see in a visual image that progresses by you at the speed of light. And the name, Sailor Speed of Light, would indicate where this person may, be, to me at least, it indicates where this person might see a visual image passing by him located in the situation described by, uh, by the name Sailor. So potentially, you know, something whizzing by as he's, say, on a deck of a ship and sees just the light and lights flashing by him. There's another one called Hitchhiker Speed of Light, Pilot Speed of Light. And they all are very different, but very kinetic, very colorful, and very beautiful. Uh, Rosenquist, to me, was really, is really one of the very great modern artists. His use of color, his use of line, and also, I think, the way any piece that you look at, uh, whether you do or don't like art, which may be abstract in nature, why it somehow speaks to you, and his use and mixture of colors, especially in this lithograph, is extraordinary. The next lithograph that I would like to describe is this Robert Rauschenberg. Now, I must admit that when I gave this to the collection, I liked it, but I didn't understand it. And in talking to you about it right now, I still don't understand it. The meaning was somewhat clarified to me uh, by the title and the elucidation of what artichoke meant by uh, Catherine Vaughan, the curator at the collection here at Hobart and William Smith. And I think that it would be very interesting, if she doesn't mind, to mention that artichoke was evidently some sort of a spying uh, program that the CIA had implemented, or that the security services of the government had implemented upon the people. But there's something very typical in this, this lithograph that is very characteristic of Rauschenberg and what I like about all of his works. First of all, he came up at a time when, uh, along with a couple of other people, um, that sort of rejected or the, the pompousness of some of the abstract expressionists. He trained with uh, George Gross, for one, who gave him a very solid uh, indication of how to use line in a lot of his works. One of the things that Johns does is he bridges art from the old to the contemporary. The other thing is he incorporates images in his art which make you think about what you're looking at. And in many instances, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know whether he's taken things from here and brought them up into modern and tried to bring them out or what. But from afar, you see shadows and you see what is in these but he twists the images in different, uh, different dimensions. This is obviously, to me, a beach scene, and it looks like something like a lifeguard or whatever climbing up into a lifeguard studio. This is a gentleman, and earlier on, I wondered whether or not he was walking away or toward us in this mountainous path, but because of the lightness on his face, you know he's moving towards you. This is a road, but it's twisted and going sideways, so it's going off into the infinity in a different dimension. Here's another image, which is probably reflection of water, at, which is also twisted sneakers. What is, what is he saying in this? I don't know. I think he's trying to show you various images of people in various places, wondering what they're doing, making you think about what various 
things are going on in different parts of our existence. And to some extent, the same thing is happening in these, these images from the past. Um, Rauschenberg always, in his, many of his prints and many of his paintings, I think incorporates more questions than answers, but poses more questions to the viewers than answers. And to me, this print especially does that to me. And I, must, I don't know whether I said it before, but when I gave it to the colleges, I didn't quite appreciate quite what it was. And the other thing I didn't appreciate was the fact that it's done on two separate types of paper, one of which is layered on top of the other, in which you might be able to see the outlines appear. He's, he's extended the image of the lithograph from this, this paper, which is ragged edged, and you can actually see the threads of the paper layered on top of this. And this must have been, the, these images must have been uh, in, uh, pressed onto the paper first in reverse, and then followed by the lithographs up on top. But I find it an intriguing print, again, asking many more questions to me than it answers, and also attempting in some way to bridge art and life from the past with the present. <laughs>